Hi there, this is Ranga from In28 Minutes and welcome to this video on continuous integration. At In28 Minutes, we have a great range of courses which will help you become a full stack developer. We offer courses on Udemy and YouTube covering a range of topics starting from Java, Spring, Spring MVC, JSP servlets, Spring Web Services and a lot more. In this video, we'll talk about continuous integration. Before we understand the aim and the definition of continuous integration, let's look at a few things. The first thing is, what is good software? A good software has at least all these basic criteria. Any software should meet its requirements. I mean, it should meet the needs of the customer, but that's more functional. So I'm here talking about technical things. One is, it should compile. So it should always compile. Any automated tests that are there, whether it's a JUnit test, whether it's an integration test, any automated tests which are there should always be successful. The third one is your code should have high quality. So for example, if you're using a tool like Sonar, then the results in Sonar should look good. And the fourth one is it should work well in its intended environment. So it should deploy properly. So that's a basic uh, version of good software. I mean, it's not really a complete definition, but it kind of captures the some of the important things which are related to good software. So when I'm developing software, I want to check whether my software is good as often as possible. So I want to check whether my automation tests are running after every code check-in. I want to check whether my code has high quality after every commit. This practice of checking if your software is good after each commit or each check-in is what is called continuous integration. The way you can think about continuous integration is just a practice where I keep checking whether my code is good. So whether my tests are running, whether my integration tests are running, whether my code quality is good, whether I'm able to deploy this software properly. So all these are things which check whether our software is good. So we keep checking whether our software is good on every commit. So this is kind of really a non-technical definition. Actually, continuous integration is a development practice. And as a practice, the aim of it is very clear. The aim of it is to make sure that the software keeps running and this, all the tests around the software keeps running. Whenever I want to deploy the software, I can deploy it very easily. So the let's look at the definition. So for me, I mean, this is not really the Wikipedia definition or the Google or, or the ThoughtWorks definition of continuous integration. But for me, the definition or continuous integration is making sure that your software is correct as often as possible. So checking the correctness of your software, whether it compiles, whether the tests run, all that kind of things as often as possible. Typically, we do it on every commit. So as soon as there is a commit in your version control system, whether it's Git, JIT, whether it's SVN, Subversion, any of them, you keep running your tests so that you know if there is a failure as immediately as possible. As we know, the aim of continuous integration is immediate feedback. So when I commit code, I immediately get a feedback saying, okay, this test is failing. Hey man, your code is not compiling. This integration test is not really running well. So all that is feedback. And I would rather have that feedback as early as possible. So I commit the code in enough, I get the feedback in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Compare that to getting a feedback five, five days down the line or after a couple of weeks, which was what was happening in a typical waterfall kind of scenario where we didn't have this kind of practices. So the aim of continuous integration is to get immediate feedback. As soon as I commit the code in, I know whether there, is a, there are any code quality problems. I know whether it compiles. I know whether it, all the tests are running. Getting a little technical, uh, what are the tools that are useful around continuous integration? Typically, the tools which are important around continuous integration are kind of the uh, continuous integration servers. For example, Jenkins is very popular. TeamCity is a paid version, which is also relatively popular. Not as popular as Jenkins, but among the paid ones, it's very popular. And we also have Bamboo. So all these Jenkins, TeamCity and Bamboo are basically things where you can configure, I want to run this build 
as soon as there is a commit on the subversion. So you can say, I want to monitor this version control system and as soon as there is a build, run this Maven build or run this Gradle build. These tools, Jenkins, Team City and Bamboo help you to schedule builds. You can either schedule a time base, so I can say build every four hours or use a commit base. So as soon as there is a commit, after 10 minutes run the build. So these are the kinds of features which are present in the continuous integration tools. The continuous integration tools depends on the build tools. So unless you have a build which is able to compile the code, which runs the tests and also does whatever you would want, you would not be able to run them through the continuous integration server. So the build tools play a major role. The typical build, rule, build tools are Maven and Gradle. The other things which would help in continuous integration is things, I mean various plugins. So if you want to do a code quality check, you need to run, you need to be able to run Sonar. So probably you can directly run Sonar as part of your Maven or Gradle build, or you can use one of the plugins which these uh, continuous integration servers provide to run the Sonar stuff. So similar to Sonar, probably automation testing and uh, deployment. So there might be plugins or they might be things as part of your build tools, which would help you to do them. So the tools basically help you to configure the build, run the build on schedule. Now that we looked at uh, what continuous integration is, I would focus on what are the important best practices. So what are the things which might go wrong and how you should focus on them. So the first one is commit often. So let's say there's a build which runs on committing code and I don't really commit anything to the build very often. So if let's say I'm committing code every five days, then what's the use of having all the infrastructure in place? If I don't commit code, the build doesn't run and I don't know whether the code is successful, I mean, whether my software is still good. So the most important practice as part of continuous integration is to make sure that your code is committed very often. I actually like to be able to commit code to the build server, I mean, to the version control system every hour, every two hours, at least twice or thrice in a day. At a minimum, you should commit once in a day. So unless you commit the code back, you don't get any feedback. You don't know whether there are any merge conflicts. You don't know whether there are failures in the test, whether automation tests fail. So all these kind of things are possible only when I commit code. So the first important thing is commit often. Commit as often as possible. Obviously, the second one is to have great tests. If you are running your continuous integration, but you don't have great tests, then what's the continuous integration really doing? So the second most important thing is have great tests. I mean, this can be unit tests, integration tests, deployment tests. So have really good tests which test the functionality. I mean, these are, I mean, focus on having tests which cover the functionality rather than focusing on tests which have coverage. So don't focus on coverage. Coverage is not really an important thing. What's really important is how much functionality are you testing. Code coverage is a metric which help you, helps you, but it's not the aim. The next best practice, which is very important, is to include as many tests as possible. Maybe when you start your first version of your software, you only check code quality and the basic unit tests. But as your software progresses and as you release, release more versions of your software, try and include more things. Include functional tests. Include integration tests as part of your continuous integration. The next important thing is to have very fast builds. So, your build should run typically between 10 to 15 minutes. Any longer than that, then the build is too slow. So try and have your builds as fast as possible. And the last but not the least is having fun. Continuous integration is really, really a fun practice. And certain teams make it even more fun by having a build light indicator. So if I come with the code and I cause the build to fail, there would be a red light somewhere, I mean, on. So the light shows whether the build is on or not. And the other thing is to make a Mickey or make a little bit of fun of the guy who caused the build to fail. So what you do is you put some kind of an indicator on the table of the person who called the who caused the build to fail, or you would make him sponsor the lunch for that particular day. So there are a lot of fun things you can do around the continuous integration. Uh, but the most important thing is to have great tests and keep committing often. Unless you have great tests and unless you keep committing often, your continuous integration process will not really be successful. 
in this video we looked at various things related to continuous integration continuous integration is basically checking the correctness of your software as often as possible we looked at the aim which is to get immediate feedback and we looked at the different tools and we also understood what are the different best practices as far as continuous integration is concerned so hope you had fun in this video uh, check out our courses on udemy and have a great time until next time bye bye